there are some limits, of course, with packaging which we can make and what we can make. Um, there's a restriction, as I said, when you look into the packaging industry, so far we can uh, make 80% switch over to a renewable or a compostable material, depending on the uh, barrier properties which you need, um, more or less. Uh, what we can't do is, for example, um, got it over here, um, vacuum bags. Vacuum bags is, is very difficult. Um, a cling film, so a stretch film, is also very difficult. So there are some limitations still, but the, the, our industry is working on that, f uh, to making other kinds of materials. But so far we can do 80%. So we say, let's focus on those 80% which we can do, rather than those 20% what we can't do. One of the disadvantages for bioplastics is that we have a maximum shelf life. Um, as we are a compostable material, um, also during the process, um, our material starts to degrade. So we have a maximum shelf life of one year, which we are giving to our products. And also, um, people will say it's a disadvantage of, the, of the only the limited uh, uh, products which are now into, into the market where you cannot put legislation for this. Uh, there's a lot of miscommunication about bioplastics. Is it bio-based or is it compostable? Um, bio-based will not automatically say that it's compostable. So we need, to, we need to explain the word more often. But we are limited. We are a small market. So uh, we need to say the benefits of bioplastics. And of course, there are also uh, disadvantages. Price. We are double, triple more expensive than normal materials. Um, uh, legislation is also difficult. Although we are compostable, um, it's not always that we are allowed to go into the bio bin uh, because the association of the composters have a fear that people cannot acknowledge the difference between a compostable packaging and to a normal packaging as they are look the same. When, for example, I take two of those trays and one is compostable and one isn't, uh, the association is very afraid that people are also throwing the normal uh, packaging into the composting plant. And we say no, people, customers, uh, consumers are very aware that something needs to be changed. And in that case, uh, we say there's a logo, uh, there's communication, uh, the government wants to go to a circular economy, so we need to do something. And in this case, we are now uh, um, struggling with the association of composters to get all the packaging which are compostable into the bio bin. And, and we say, okay, we can imagine that this one looks very similar to a conventional tray. That we say, okay, then we go for a meat tray for recycling because PLA is a very good recycle material, which we can use again for example, flower pots, uh, which at the end they are compostable. And then again, we are in a circular economy. If, for example, uh, a bioplastics will appear into a recycling process, um, it's very easy to separate bioplastics from uh, conventional plastics. For example, again, when I'm taking the, the PET tray, uh, this is very easy to separate from a PLA tray by infrared. So by infrared, you can, dis you can separate uh, different kinds of material. So there is no problem with recycling because PLA is perfect to recycle. It's only the, uh, uh, the kilograms or the, 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 the amount of PLA which is coming into the market which is very less, and therefore they cannot set up a, a separate waste or a separate stream for PLA. So we need to get more into the market, so to convince more people to use PLA, and only then recyclers are able to separate PLA from, uh, from PET.